more weeks until the celestial show in the sky. We've been waiting seven years to experience a total eclipse of the sun will cast an arcing shadow path from the southern border to Niagara Falls. South Florida will see a partial eclipse, though millions in the U.S. will be in that path of totality. And aside from the serious wow factor, <laughs> the total eclipse is a once in a lifetime chance for scientists to discover things about the sun that they have yet to learn. With us today, the CEO of Frost Museum in Miami. And did you know, lucky for us, Dr. Doug Roberts is an astrophysicist. Dr. Roberts, great to have you. No, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. I think, um, we, <laughs> I think our producers are being funny and just put me in total darkness. Okay. Um, so you will be the first astrophysicist, I think, ever on our program. So I'm very excited about that. So I will say, I was, I went to the total eclipse to cover it in 2017, and it was so cool, cool factor high. But I want to hear from you as what kind of scientific opportunity this one this year, next month, is going to be. Well, every time that a solar eclipse happens, the moon completely covers the sun for a few minutes. and when that happens, scientists can peer uh, and actually see the sun's atmosphere without being blinded by the light of what's called a photosphere, which is the part of the sun that we see. So uh, when that happens, that ch chance alignment, we have the ability to explore the, the sun's atmosphere in ways that uh, we can't, uh, you know, the most, most of the rest of the time of the, um, when we observe the sun. How? How do, you, how do you do that? Well, they have different telescopes that essentially look at sort of the fingerprints of the sun. Um, the composition of the gases, how they're moving, um, and that the sun is a is a variable object, so it changes. Sometimes it's it's uh, uh, throwing out a lot of wind. Sometimes it's not as much wind. And understanding that helps us understand its effect on the solar system. Actually, the cosmic rays and and high energy particles that are expelled from the sun interact with our atmosphere and our and our um, magnetic field around our planet to cause the northern lights and um, potentially damaging. Um, uh, satellites and radio communications. So the more we understand about the physics of the sun, the more we can prepare for and uh, and make sure that what the spacecraft we have in orbit are are safe. And so you you can't do that in, unless the sun is blocked. Um, so, some some observations can be done um, with spacecraft. They're actually um, in orbit around the sun, but other observations really need that. Um, uh, you to block the light of the photosphere to see, because um, you said you saw the eclipse in 2017. So if you see it with your eyes, you see it just looks totally different. And it's that difference um, that allows you to see that that kind of, uh, it's called the sun's corona that's, uh, that is really in impossible to see with the brightness of the photosphere. You know what I thought was really interesting about this year, NASA and some of the research groups probably that you're talking about are relying on sort of citizen scientists to do some of the research. So they'll be relying on what, like, like lay people's um, camera shots or, or video and, and what, what good will, what will they be looking for there? What good will that do? Yeah, so there's a citizen science project that NASA did in 2020 or 2017 eclipse and they're doing again this year where anybody who's observing the eclipse can take photos of it and upload it um, uh, through a website at NASA that where NASA scientists will then be able to uh, again look at the at the eclipse as it moves across the, the 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 planet so if nasa were to set up a telescope and observe one location they would get a great shot from that location but that only lasts for a few minutes and, and then that sun sh the the shadow passes to another location so if we can have citizen scientists which is basically everybody who has a phone a smartphone looking at the eclipse during during the moment of totality along the eclipse path then they can keep, capture all that all the information to um uh, get a better understanding of what, of what the phenomenon was going on. You know, when we were there, we actually chose Columbia, South Carolina last time. I, want you, I know you can't see your television, but Darby, our director, has put me in total darkness. He has put me in an eclipse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so uh, when we were there in Columbia, the, the, in the path of totality, totality was, I think, two minutes and, and some change. And that was certainly enough time to, you know, feel the kind of, lavender aura and hear weird bird chirping and for everyone in the field with us to sort of gasp in the glow. Um, but this time it's going to be a bit different. Totality is actually four and a half minutes, almost twice. And yes. there are some other changes too. The moon is closer to the earth. Well, talk about like what's different this time. 
Yeah, so um, the, basically the moon goes around the, the Earth um, in not quite an exact circle. So sometimes it's closer to the Earth uh, during an eclipse and sometimes it's further. Um, actually, there was an eclipse last October where the sun, where the moon was was more distant. And so it, its angle in the sky didn't quite cover the sun. And that was what was called an annular eclipse. Um, and so uh, the eclipse this time, this, the moon is closer. Um, uh, and it's actually closer, as you said, than 2017. So it covers more of it. And also, it, as you say, the, the eclipse lasts longer. So um, th that will allow for one of the cool things that happens during an eclipse you probably observed was um, the, you know, the, the animals around start reacting to the what looks like twilight or, or dusk instantly. And so it's a, you know, uh, crickets will start cricketing and, and frogs will start or will start cro croaking and frogging. And, <laughs> frogs yeah, will frog. And, and so they'll that all happens long. The longer the eclipse goes on, the more the animals are kind of and the more you feel that actually the temperature might drop 10 or 15 degrees in, in that in a couple in two or three minutes. So the four minute eclipse actually will feel more more. And also people go to great lengths to see eclipses. And so um, they'll, you know, you would go there and so if you, you would pay whatever money you could to extend that for one or two more minutes. So uh, going to the longer eclipse is definitely worth, worth doing if you have a chance. Uh, we were there then and that day I started planning for seven years later, we're going again. <laughs> well, that's what everybody says. I, I, I did the same thing. I was there in Missouri, um, where I, or in Nebraska rather, when I saw the eclipse. And, uh, and as an astronomer, it was the first one I saw, saw in 2017 and that was exactly my thought too was, When's the next eclipse? Let's do it I'm again. Listen, Dr. Yeah. Roberts, real quickly, I know that the Frost Museum is doing a, a, a big deal eclipse program. Quickly, tell us tell us about that. Yeah, so the weekend before the eclipse, again, the eclipse on April, Monday, April 8th, uh, it starts around uh, uh, 1, 1 45 in the afternoon until 4, 4 15. Uh, during the weekend before, we're going to have uh, a special planetarium show and educational activities telling, talking about the history of the eclipse, how to observe it safely. Uh, we have these eclipse glasses um, that you can you can um, get at the museum, um, and we'll have solar telescopes to watch it. Um, we'll also have live feeds from NASA showing the eclipse um, in totality from different, various locations. And actually, and then the week, the Sunday before, we're working with Alhambra Orchestra and presenting kind of a a, 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 a orchestra, orchestral performance and art and astronomy art, including some in, uh, information around the eclipse with some educational activities at that the Moss Center. Amazing! That sounds yeah. great. Sky Geeks, let the flag fly. Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Roberts, great to have you on the program. Enjoy the eclipse. Thanks so much.